Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I'm going to be very contradictory in a lot of the things that I say. But the first thing I'm going to tell you is read less poetry. Second thing I'm going to tell you is buy my books. But read less poetry. Okay, all right. Enough about all that fun stuff. I just want you guys to know that um, giving me five stars on iTunes is amazing. And I think this week is finally going to be the week that I put the podcast on every other platform. So if you were on another platform and hearing this, know that it happened. If it didn't, it's because I haven't done it yet. So you wouldn't be hearing this anyway. Wow, look at this. Space-time continuum, guys. Space-time continuum. Oh my god. So, as we go into this almost midway point in the crowdfunding campaign for winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry a book by me mostly new poems okay i want to say it like this because somebody left me a comment saying that they don't know what i'm talking about when i keep talking about your mom saw to me something so i'm like oh shit maybe i'm not being very clear that this is a book that i wrote and i'm crowdfunding the pre-orders for i feel like i've been having so much fun talking about your mom and all the stuff your mom does and all the stuff your mom needs that i forgot to talk about it being a book which i know i have but like i feel like i do i play with it a little bit more maybe i need to lay in on that side a little more than your mom does okay so we'll, we'll figure this out. But then they said, and it was Shannon. Um, so thank you, Shannon, for the comment. And thank you for pointing out my flaws because somebody needs to fucking do it. Shannon said, oh, I thought it was like an actual book prize that like people can submit to or something. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, oh, maybe it should be. Maybe every year I should host the your mom's sodomy prize for poetry and maybe next year you could be the winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry maybe this is a thing we're gonna do it started out as a joke and then turned into something more horrific and now might actually be something worth a damn for people and especially since i did that video a while back on the economy like basically how much money the book prize industry takes in over the years that was a really interesting video and I, I learned a ton of shit and I even said in that video, I'm like, oh shit, maybe I should be doing book prizes. <laughs> not, not submitting for them, but actually putting them on because it seems like there is a lot of money to make in the book prize industry. Now, I will say, not that trying to exploit book prizes is a way to get rich, but as a small press, it's actually not a bad way to generate extra income and you still have a book to put out at the end of it and it's a book that hopefully a lot of people will know about because all these people were trying to get the prize so it's actually quite interesting so um i don't know hit me up next year on on my next birthday and we'll see um if uh the 2023 winner has been announced yet This is fucking hysterical. I'm having a a fucking laugh right now, dude. Oh my god. I don't want to spend too much time on the, the intro here. But I want you guys to know to stick around to the end so you can hear about the free week long workshop that starts on March 20th. Okay? So that'll that should like hold you in a little bit. Now also I want to say A big motherfucking thank you to all of the badass mamma jammas over in Thank You Town. So let's get right to that. So I want to give a big thank you to all my motherfuckers over on the Patreon. I want to give a big thank you to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. I also want to give a thank you to you fucks over at the Anarchy. Or no, 
No, we're not even going to thank the fucking Anarchy Crew yet. You guys have to fucking wait. Wait your turn, Anarchy Crew. We're thanking the Thank You Crew right now. So I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, and to Jan. You guys kick ass and you guys rock. And I appreciate the fact that you want to see my mug doing this podcast. So you guys are awesome. Now, okay, fine. Anarchy Crew, I will thank you guys now. So I'm going to give a big thank you to you. Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Josh, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Tim, G, to Chill Baby, and to Tamara. Thank you so much. And the biggest of the biggest thank yous goes over to the Chappies over in the Chat Book of the Month Club. I want to give a big thank you to you, Caitlin, and to Chase. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. So, with all that said, I do also want to say thank you to those who have already put their pledges in. So I want to give, if you could see here, we are six backers in and we are at 355, which is probably a little over 20% of the goal. I'm not good with percentages, guys. I'm just going to say that. But yeah, so we are at 355 with six backers, and I want to give a thank you to those six motherfuckers right now. So I want to give a thank you to Caitlin, to JH, to Bunny, to Shaylin, to Debra, and to Chase. You guys are fucking awesome. I love ya. So with that said, get over to igg.me slash at slash your mom so you too can join the fun of putting a smile on your mom's face. And in order to do that, I'm also going to be reading a poem out of the winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry a little bit later. So now, as the rain falls outside my window, on with the show. All right, everybody. I have, believe it or not, I have notes. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay with my notes. So real quick, if you want to participate in the scavenger hunt, um, I've done this a couple times now. It's been going really, really cool. And normally what it is, it's part open mic night, part workshop, and part scavenger hunt. Basically how this works out is if you want to be a part of this, you have to let me know. So send me an email, ihatemountwallgmail.com. And when it's time to do it, which will be Thursday, tomorrow, by the time you hear this. So it'll be March 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific. So if you want to be a part of the um, open mic workshop scavenger hunt, let me know. I hate gmail.com and I will send you a Zoom link. Now, these things are posted on my YouTube channel after, so you could go back and watch it. But know that other people will be able to watch it too. But this week, and we only, we don't do this every week, it's like every other week, but this week it's going to be really cool because we're going to have a featured poet um, do about like 10 or 15 minutes at the event. And guess who that poet is? I'll let you guess. It's one of my favorites. Bunny Wild. So Bunny Wild is going to be reading a bunch of her poetry. And it is going to be sick. Because Bunny's fucking awesome. Okay? Just to let you know. If you want to partake. And when that goes up, I will definitely let you guys all know. So that is the scavenger hunt. This Thursday, March 16th. At 4pm Pacific Standard Time. So... I did a video the other day. It was called Read Less, Write More. When I said this whole thing about read less poetry, I don't just mean with poetry. I mean just in general. You know, like, I just realized that I have all of these separate things I want to talk about, and they're all interconnected. Okay, so let me talk about this also on here. On um, the latest episode of Poetry Says which Alice was nice enough to say happy birthday to me on, which was super sweet, and I appreciated it. She was talking with this dude by the name of Stephen Edgar, okay? But he is basically a formal poet, but he was talking about how he didn't go to school or anything like that, and he learned 
how to do what he does by um, imitating D.H. Lawrence. Okay? And I found this so refreshing because I feel like a lot of poets out there, when they start talking about like their influences and who they read and stuff like this, they are very worried about sounding like an imitator. So, like, they choose their words very carefully, it seems like. And, like, they kind of dance around the issue that when they started, that they were basically an imitator. What drives me crazy about this is that when any of us start anything, we're imitating something. And it could be anything from the way you dress to the way you do your hair, hand gestures, anything. Like, whenever you start something... You're doing that because you saw it somewhere first. Even as a, a baby, like learning how to walk, learning how to talk, learning how to do anything. That's why there's accents from all over the world. Everyone sounds different when they talk because they're imitating the speech that they hear with the people they're around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why imitation is so dirty it's like whatever i mean i know it probably makes people feel like people will call them a hack or something like that and i think with that the proof is in the pudding i remember years ago there was this um woman who was a poet at one point kind of fell away from it and was just like writing like kind of short stories at this point because she was writing poetry, but then she loved poetry. And when she would read poetry, she felt like she would read something and then too much of that writer's work ended up in her work. Like, she felt like the more she read anything, the more she would end up, like, imitating that poet. And I still feel like this, but, like, I think that's bullshit, you know? Like you have a voice you are you but you are also the culmination of all of the things that you enjoy about something okay so if you are into a certain few poets or whatever it's going to be almost impossible for at least a period of your life to have some of their influence come out in your writing it's it's just it's a thing that fucking happens okay so we'll talk about me here when i first started writing poetry i was writing poetry at first i was writing songs because i listened to a lot of music and um, i was a kid but i was still writing rhymes you know what i'm saying and doing all that stuff and i've talked about it before how the first two poetry books that weren't Dr. Seuss or Shel Silverstein that I ever got was um, this beautiful little Edgar Allan Poe poetry collection, this little tiny hardcover that I loved, and I can't believe I don't have it anymore. I don't know what happened to it. Someone probably took it. I got that, and I got um, Jim Morrison's Wilderness. The Poe stuff was amazing because it's fucking Poe. Like, the imagery in it is so heavy, and the narratives in it are so, like, heavy and dark. It was just like reading a bunch of little horror stories, you know? Like, stuff to give yourself goosebumps. But when I was reading the Jim Morrison one, and it's funny because I haven't read that book since I was probably 14 was the last time I looked at that. And I'm curious, I probably should pick it up and just see what I think about it now. But when I was looking through that, the thought of me, like, I'm like, oh my god, I could, like, write songs to no music, and they don't have to be like anything. I can just write stuff. And it was really, like, a trip. And, like, it kind of opened my mind, because I guess all the songs I was writing when I was that young was me like coming up with a melody and then i would write 
songs to a melody and then i would get my guitar out and try to figure out the melody and then i'm like oh i have a song the idea that i could just jot down thoughts poetically whether they rhymed or didn't you know like blew my mind it was just it's one of those things that seems so simple but then when you actually say it out loud, you're like, oh my God, I just discovered fire and all that stuff. And then like from there I went to, cause like at that point, um, I'm trying to remember how old I was somewhere in between sixth and eighth grade. I decided right then that I loved poetry and like, I didn't know like if I was a poet or anything like that, but that's when I knew I loved it. And the thing about it that was weird is that I don't think I ever really talked to anyone about poetry. When, like when we would do it in class, like when it would come up in English or whatever, I'd get all excited. But other than that, I, I don't remember ever really talking to anyone about poetry until either late in high school or college, which is bizarre to me to think about. But anyway, so from there... I started reading Henry Rollins, and I remember I got a selected poems of Robert Frost and a selected poems of Longfellow. So for years, those were the only poetry books I had. Poe, Jim Morrison, Henry Rollins, Robert Frost, and Longfellow. That was like what my poetry library was. And then eventually Homer, Milton you know, like all of these like long form epic type things. And I thought that was really cool. And I wanted to really play with that idea. And um, I started working on projects that fell along those lines that obviously never f were finished. But it, during this time, I was still in bands and like writing music and playing songs and doing all that shit. So all of the actual poetry stuff was just tangled up in my songs i got into sylvia plath right when i graduated high school and that's when things got dark <laughs> oh god that was kind of the stuff i was into when i started putting together what would end up being like cart wayne twain um in like the early 2000s again i was reading a lot of poe and then because i was really into pulp and horror and all that other stuff i started reading a lot of hp lovecraft's poetry and a lot of robert e howard and a lot of clark ashton smith and like even like some of the more verse type stuff older stuff like Beers and Blackwood and Lord Dunsany or Dunsany or however you say it. Like more like versy stuff like that. And that was really helpful in me putting together like that period of my stuff. Like all of the super dark, depressing, gothic poems that I was writing. And that's what I thought poetry was at that point. Like I thought poetry was gothic poetry and poetry was something that you wrote to kind of bridge the gap between the living and the dead like it was fucking dark you know but to me it seemed like otherworldly umbilical cord if you will to the other side and it was really powerful for me and because my depression was so fucking heavy like that shit came out and that was all rhyme but like i was very much under the impression that like i'm like yes like this is my this is my poe phase like i'm writing gothic poetry based off of how poe made me feel how lovecraft made me feel how like tim burton's the melancholy death of oyster boy made me feel you know um, like Dr. Seuss, um, Mr. Men, you know, like all of these things that are like super dark and gloomy, but also these other things that are really playful. Like, and even then I was aware of what I was doing. Like this was imitation 
at its best. Um, but I will say that because of that imitation, I don't know how much of me was really in that. Like, I don't think you could pick it up and read it and go, oh, yeah, that's Matt. Whereas the stuff I write now, I feel like you could pick it up and read it and go, oh, yeah, that's Matt. Um, to a lot of poets, that's not important because the poem is the most important thing. So it doesn't matter who it sounds like or what, as long as it hits all the notes. And that's one of those arguments that is pointless to have because that's what some people are into. You know, some dudes like to have chicks step on their face. Okay. They're into it. I don't get it, but that's cool. You know, to each their own. Live and let live, I always say now. This got really long, and that's what she said, and I apologize. As far as, like, Bukowski and stuff like that, because that is... Like, I posted my um, book cover for When Are Your Mom Saw Me Prize for Poetry, and within, like, ten minutes of me posting it, somebody left a comment on it, and I can't tell if it was a compliment or an insult, but they just wrote Bukowski Disciple. And I'm like, huh, don't know how I feel about that. You're either being a dick or you're not. And I don't know if I should be insulted or applauded. Like, I don't understand. And I know I've talked about this on my channel before. I don't know if I talked about it on the podcast. But Bukowski, I came across because people were telling me, oh, you must really like Bukowski, like after reading my stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I, I, I'm unfamiliar. And a lot of this came up after I originally put out Anxious Anxiety. All of the, my short stories and stuff that ended up... Now that you could get them, like the Anxious Anxiety chapbook and the Panic chapbook, have them. But this was like back in 2012... I want to say there were some other ones too. And I was like releasing them on Amazon and people kept saying like, Oh man, you totally sound like Bukowski and, or you sound like Chuck Polnick. I, I can never say his name, last name, right? I apologize. Chuck Polnick, maybe we'll say. And so because I kept getting these like comments and like people would say it in reviews and stuff like that, I decided to check both of these guys out. I can't remember the Polnick book I read, but I was like, eh, this is okay. And then I read Post Office by Bukowski, and I was like, oh my God, like, I fucking love this. Like, yes, like, I agree. Like, I feel like there's a connection here. And then I read um, some short stories that the Polnick dude had. And the difference between that dude and Bukowski is that I feel like the Polnick dude, I really wish I knew how to say his last name. I don't think I've ever heard anyone actually say it. But anyway, I feel like he goes extreme for the purpose of going extreme. Like he, there, and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of heart in those things as he does it whereas Bukowski I feel there's a lot of heart in all of the stuff in that even in the ugly stuff he does and it's very self-deprecating not in a way where suicide is eminent but in a way that's just like a like a shrug you know it's like well what are you gonna do and I feel that so much more and so I read Bukowski's novels and um, read all of his short stories. I even started, because I was writing the rats, the poems that would be in the rats chapbook, and I wrote All My Friends Are Dead, that chapbook, before I read any of Bukowski's poetry. And I think the first book of his I got was Love is a Dog from Hell. I'm pretty sure that was the first one I got. When I read that, I was just like, oh my God. Like, it is kind of uncanny in the sense of how close I feel 
our work is, I guess is the best way to put it. And then after that, I started reading tons of his poetry. So I think like right after I read that, I picked up The Last Night of the Earth poems, War All the Time, Days Run Away Like Horses Over the Hills, and You Get So Alone Sometimes That It Just Makes Sense. I think those were the first ones I got. And then all the other ones I picked up as time went on kind of thing. But I fucking ate those like it was like the only food I had, you know, and I was fucking starving. I did pick up certain things. Like there were some things that I noticed he did that I didn't really like that I don't want to do. But then there were other things like how his stanza breaks are. But again, they vary all the time. And I think that's when I realized how variants could be okay, you know? But what worried me was, I'm like, okay, if I'm... And so at this point, this is when I started doing monthly chapbooks. And I wasn't putting out monthly chapbooks just to put out monthly chapbooks. I was putting them out because I realized... I wrote enough poetry every month that I could put that out. And because most of the poetry, um, since it was all written around the same time, had a sort of theme together with it, that it was just really easy for me to put those together. And that's how all of this started. And I started doing zine fests and tabling at conventions and stuff like that and hawking books, okay? Um, but I was aware that I didn't want, I was probably worried that if all I read was Bukowski, that would start to seep into what I do. But at the same time, I also wanted to expand my inspiration. I wanted to see if there was other stuff like that out there. Like, Bukowski couldn't have been the only one, you know? And so I was still writing, but I was, like, on this quest to find, like, f like five, just a handful of poets that I would call, like, my Mount Rushmore. You know what I'm saying? And so I searched and I searched and I searched, and boy, howdy, I read a lot of garbage and to other people, it might be gold, but to me, it was like rotten banana peels and fucking used condoms. It, it was just like, no, it, it just did not speak to me. And um, this was also around the time when I realized that I think, um, especially with poetry, that I should not take recommendations from people. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I gotta start getting to a fucking point here. I was looking for those people. I feel like I found them, at least in certain books. Like, there were certain things that I found. So, like, obviously Douglas Blazik, Steve Richman, Neely Tchaikovsky, Al Purdy, and to an extent, Allen Ginsberg. Like, I really felt these writers... And then I was like, okay, I'm going to put out a poetry zine, like a poetry magazine, because I need to find living fucking people who are doing this that I can, like, get together with and do stuff. Through doing that, I came across Holly Day. Like, Holly Day submitted some stuff to me. And Holly Day has a ton of poetry books out. And I'm sure I've talked about her on here before, and if I haven't, I apologize. But um, she has a book called The Book of Beasts that is just awesome. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The best book of her stuff, to me, is the stuff that she submitted to me. And um, I've been wanting to put her stuff out for years. But hopefully... If I don't get to put it out, somebody else will put that out because um, it's just, it, you feel every fucking thing that is said and it's heart wrenching and moving and you feel for her so much 
and relate so much. Just the American nightmare metaphor use is just brilliant. So, like, obviously, Holly Day would be, like, on my little Mount Rushmore there. So, once I had all of those pieces in place, that's when I really felt like I can shine. That's when I felt like I can do all of this, you know. I don't need to keep reading. I have enough inspiration in me. I have enough of a culmination of greats that I can do whatever I need to do. As far as imitation goes, it's okay to imitate until you know how to do it. And then what you do is you put your spin on it. And you become that thing to where the things you do are more synonymous with you than the people who you were Im that you were imitating. You know, it's like the steal like an artist thing. If you haven't read Austin Kleon's steal like an artist book, you might want to pick it up. It's brilliant. I just feel like a lot of people when it comes to reading poetry, they feel like they can't write anything because they're not well read enough. They, they haven't read all the greats. They don't know the canon. They don't have enough knowledge of what's good and what's not. And I think all that's bullshit because all of that is subjective and it's subjective based on subjective shoutings from critics and academics over the years. And now it's just, we have to accept this as great. Have you ever read a book that other people and that was critically acclaimed or even a movie for fuck's sake? Everyone said this movie's great and you go and watch it and you're like, I don't get it. I don't see it. That's okay because it's subjective. So there is never going to be something that everybody loves absolutely. It's never going to happen. So because of that, the idea that people can say, this is a classic, everyone should read it, that's just some dude's opinion. And if other people share that opinion, they share it because they were told that that's the opinion to have, and maybe they really do like it. Maybe they don't. It doesn't matter. It's just a fucking opinion. So I feel like once you get to the point where you are comfortable with yourself that reading poetry or reading other stuff continuously because you have to is absolute bonkers crazy and makes no sense. You don't have to read another fucking book the rest of your life. And it's completely fine. Seriously. In that video I did, I did the whole Garth Marenghi joke from Dark Place where... He says, um, I'm the only writer who's written more books than he's read. And I've always used that joke for me too. And it's a joke because the popular opinion is that's crazy. So he must not be good if he's written more books than he's read. But the only reason why that's a thing is because he said it's a thing. And other people have said it's a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of these greats from way back when, they didn't read a lot of books. Why? Because there weren't a lot of books. It's just a numbers thing. And some of you might be saying, oh, but yes, but the books they read were really good. How do you know? Some of these people who wrote great books way back when probably never fucking read a book before. How do you know if they did? It's all fucking stupid bullshit. It's all fucking smoke and mirrors. Nobody fucking cares. If you remember in the podcast I did with Alice, and I don't mean to keep throwing Alice under this bus because this is a bus that I hope doesn't stick with her. But like she was joking around saying that before she started reading a lot of people, she thought she was great. She thought she was like maybe even a genius. Okay? Go back to that feeling. If reading other writers just makes you feel like shit... Stop fucking reading. Creation 
is the most important thing. Okay? But when you are constantly told you have to read all these other things, you're just comparing yourself to people at that point. Like, you've already decided that you are a writer. You've already decided you're a poet. If that's the case, go be that poet. Go be that thing. You've decided it now. Go do it. If you want to research stuff, research stuff. If you want to read something for pleasure, read something for pleasure. But don't read stuff because you feel like you have to or you're supposed to. And definitely don't read stuff to compare your stuff to others. Because we are always the worst judges of ourselves. Always. We are our harshest critics. All the time. So why give yourself that ammo? Just fucking be awesome. And do the fucking thing. Who fucking cares? Be awesome. Do the thing. Okay, this was a bit rambly. Um, I hope I made the points I wanted to make. Um, there was some other stuff I wanted to talk about, but we're already going long. So let me get straight into those butt plugs. Actually, let me read a poem to you real quick out of the winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. This is um, the first poem in the book here. So hopefully you'll dig it. And I just read this somewhere. I can't remember where it was. So if, if I read this on a episode recently, I apologize. Um, but it's called Hang In There. I lost 74 bucks at the track today, but I'm not in jail. A pane of glass shattered in the window, but I'm not in jail. Won't be able to buy groceries for two more days, but I'm not in jail. It's only 8 p.m. and I'm drinking the last of my wine, but I'm not in jail. My utilities paid apartment decided it's not utilities paid anymore, but I'm not in jail. The poetry isn't selling like it used to, but I'm not in jail. A lot of fucked things, even worse, much worse than stated above, could happen to you. And as long as you can say, but I'm not in jail, after it, everything is going to be okay. Like the cat poster says, hang in there, baby. So yeah, so that is Hang In There from Winner of Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. All right, butt plug time. Let's hit it. So first off, again, don't forget, the scavenger hunt is this Thursday, March 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. If you would like to partake, hit me up at IHateMattWall at gmail.com. Nope, I hate, yep, that is the actual email address. Sorry about that. Um, Blood Rag Issue 9 will be out today. If you are listening to this, Blood Rag Issue 9 is out. And um, on the next episode, I will go through everyone who's in there. Now, remember, the new workshop starts March 20th. It's the Poetic Anarchy Workshop, um, the free workshop that I did last summer. Um, it's five days, Monday through Friday. Um, I don't know the exact time yet, but if you want to be a part of it, send me an email at ihateMattWallGmail.com, and I will give you the information. And if you remember, this book here, so Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, this whole book was put together by people who were in the workshop from poems they wrote while they were in the workshop. And it has Bunny Wild, Nate Colton, Mindy Simmonson, Tim Johnston, Thomas Crop, Hannah Fletcher, Garrett Carroll, O'Marie, and me. And a few of those people weren't even in the Anarchy group. So you don't have to um, do anything. You don't have to be a part of my members or anything like that. This is free for everybody. It's, again, five days. And it's basically, if you've ever wanted to create, if you've ever wanted to do this, if, if you have been told that you shouldn't, if you've been told don't quit your day job, if you've been told there's no money in poetry, if you've been told any of these things, but you've always wanted to give it a go, you always wanted to try it, this is for you. This is the thing. I'm giving you permission to do this and take the course and fucking start creating. Because again, creation is the fucking thing. The magic is in the making. You know what I'm saying? Definitely hit that up if you're interested in doing that. 
Again, that will be March 20th through March 24th. Um, also, The Bloodshed Review is my new poetry magazine. Um, if you would like to submit some poems to that, um, I guess three to five poems, um, any length, doesn't matter, send those poems to Poetic Anarchy Press at gmail.com and put bloodshed review submission in the thing and just copy and paste it in the body of the email. So yeah, so I think that's pretty much it other than making sure you go over and say a big tasty hello to your mom. Um, we have 18 days left as of this recording. We have six backers and we are at $355 guys. Let's get that shit going. Let's get this book up and running, make it as beautiful as possible. There's all sorts of perks and awesome things down there. And again, as we get closer to the end, we will be going over what these things are. So igg.me slash at slash your mom, igg.me slash at slash your mom, igg.me slash at slash your mom. Said it three times, so it must be real. Um, get over there and do what's right type art everybody and i will talk to you all later i just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible anarchy crew and my followers on patreon i appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible you guys are awesome and if you'd like to join the crew or the anarchy crew just hit the join button beneath this video and if you'd like to become a member of my patreon you can run over to the link down below to do that as well thank you